Hello, this is AJ. Welcome to the vocabulary lesson for excitement. Let's start. Our first word is specificity. Specificity. A little difficult to pronounce, specificity. In fact, uh, many native speakers have trouble pronouncing this word, especially if you say it fast in a sentence. Specificity. 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 Sometimes I have trouble pronouncing it too, but I'm doing it correctly now. Specificity. And specificity is the noun. Specificity means um, specificness is what it really means, right? It means being specific, being detailed, being very exact. It's kind of the opposite of generality. Generality is the uh, situation of being very general. So, for example, say, I want a lot more money. That statement is a generality, right? It's not detailed. But if you say, I want uh, $2,496, well, that statement has specificity. It has detail. It has specificness. So that's specificity. Our next word is imprecise. Imprecise is an adjective, and in fact, it's the opposite of specific. And it's the opposite of precise. Precise is very similar to specific. It means you'd be very exact, very detailed. So again, I want $2,496.20. That's precise. That's detailed. The opposite is imprecise meaning not detailed, not precise. Imprecise means I'd like some more money, right? That's not detailed. It's very general. It's imprecise. So Tim Ferriss is saying that the question, what do I want? It's an imprecise question. It's not a specific question. It's too general. It's too imprecise. Our next word is faded. To be faded. He says, uh, the question, what are your goals? That question is faded for confusion. It's faded to cause confusion. To be faded for means to be destined for. It means something that absolutely will happen in the future or soon. So to be fated for confusion, it means it absolutely will create confusion in the near future or in the far future. So that question, that general question, uh, what are your goals or what are my goals or what do I want? It's fated to cause confusion. It absolutely will cause confusion. Next is the word worthwhile. So he's saying, what is the purpose of goals? Why are goals worthwhile? Worthwhile means beneficial. So why are goals beneficial? Why are goals useful, helpful, good to do, good to have? Worthwhile. So worthwhile, again, uh, beneficial, Helpful, useful, worthwhile. So worthwhile. Why are goals useful? Why are goals worthwhile? Why are they worthwhile? Our next word is ambiguous. He says that the idea of happiness is too ambiguous. And again, ambiguous has this idea of being imprecise. General, not clear is what it really means. Ambiguous means not clear. Not easy to understand, not really clear. It's a a little bit confusing, a little bit too general, a little bit unclear. All those ideas. Ambiguous, ambiguous. So happiness is ambiguous. He means that 
We're not quite sure what exactly is happiness. What does it mean exactly? In, in his opinion, it's an ambiguous word. It means we're, we're not really sure what it means. We're not totally clear. We have a general idea, but we're not exactly sure. We're not totally clear. We're ambiguous about it. We're unclear about it. So again, ambiguous means not clear, not perfectly clear. It's the opposite of perfectly clear. Ambiguous, ambiguous. And next we have the phrase, bear with me. He says, uh, bear with me. Bear with me while I ask more questions. Bear with me is an idiom, and it means be patient with me. It means be patient. Please be patient with me. So we say it when we need someone to be patient. Maybe we're going to talk a lot. Maybe we're trying to explain a difficult idea. So we want the other person to be patient. So we say, bear with me, and then we explain. Right? He says, bear with me while I ask more questions. Be patient with me while I ask more questions. Please be patient with me. That's what bear with me means. So bear with me means be patient with me. Please be patient with me. Bear with me. Bear with me. So we say it anytime we're explaining something difficult, anytime we want the other person to be patient. We think they need to be patient with us. We're doing something that requires them to be patient. Bear with me. Our next word is indifference. Tim Ferriss says the opposite of love is not hate. The opposite of love is indifference. Indifference means not caring. No emotion, totally not caring about something. So let's say, let's talk about an easy example, a sports team. Let's say Manchester United. Soccer team, football team. So maybe some people love Manchester United. They love them. They're great. They're great. And then some people hate them, right? I hate Manchester United. They suck. I hate them. So both of those emotions, they're very strong, right? Love is a very powerful, strong emotion. Hate is a powerful, strong emotion. Both people, both groups of people have strong emotions. Both care a lot. Right? If someone hates Manchester United, they, they care. They still care a lot. They want Manchester United to fail. They have a lot of emotion about Manchester United. But indifference is the opposite. It means no emotion about a subject. You don't care. And the adjective is indifferent. So if you say, I'm indifferent about Manchester United. I'm totally indifferent. You don't care. If they win, you don't care. If they lose, you don't care. You have no emotion, no interest, no caring at all. So that's indifference is the noun. Or the adjective is to be indifferent. I'm indifferent about that topic. I'm indifferent about Manchester United. Don't care. No emotion. Zero caring. Indifferent. All right, our next word is synonym. Excitement is the real synonym for happiness, is what he said. So synonym is just a word that means the same as another word. They're similar words, similar meanings. So every vocabulary lesson uh, in these Power English lessons, every vocabulary lesson is really a synonym lesson. Because I tell you other words that have similar meanings. So he says, happiness and excitement are synonyms. It means they're very close together. The meaning is very close. Two words with very close meanings, very similar meanings. That's a synonym. All right. Our next and final word is bliss. He says, many people suggest that you follow your passion. Many people suggest that you follow your bliss. Bliss is a very strong word, and it means uh, 
super happiness. Incredible happiness. It's much stronger than happiness. Happiness is kind of an average word, a normal kind of emotion. Bliss is a very strong, powerful emotion, much stronger than happiness. So it's a synonym. It means basically the same. It means happiness, but it means very powerful happiness, very strong happiness, a lot of happiness. That's bliss. So again, bliss. Bliss is very, very powerful happiness. It's a much stronger word. Bliss. Bliss. Okay, then. That is the end of our vocabulary lesson for excitement. I will see you next time. Bye-bye.